Hello there guys, my name is Coaster Child YouTube channel, Doncaster Born, but built for theme park news and welcome to a theme park news from update from M&D's Scotland theme park where today we have some very unfortunate news that the park has been put under administration and 165 staff members have all been made redundant. Now first of all my hearts and prayers go out to all the staff that was made redundant from M&D's theme park. It's such a shame when the park goes into administration. And I'm basically going to show you all the stats and the facts, uh, including a news article from the BBC and also the official Facebook post from M&D's themselves. Then I'm going to talk about my thoughts on this and also why I think that administration doesn't just mean permanent closure. Because there is similar situations where it has worked. So there's still hope for M&Ds. It hasn't permanently closed yet. It's just under administration. So before we get started, please like the video if you've loved it. Comment down below your thoughts. Subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. Please share your friends, family and on social media. And make sure you get your questions in for the next Q&A video to celebrate 2,000 subscribers when we hit that milestone. Use the hashtag question before or after your question. And for now guys, let's get into this video. So let's start with the stats and facts from the BBC News article about the closure and slash administration, so temporary closure slash administration of M and D's. So Scotland's largest theme park has gone into administration following years of financial difficulty. Now operator M and D's Le Limit uh, Leisure Limited contacted its 165 staff on Thursday, telling them telling them they were being made redundant with immediate effect. The firm had already laid off staff at Scotland's theme park and the Alona Hotel in Strathclyde Park during this coronavirus lockdown. Now, the firm had the park in Motherwell opened in 1996, has had more than 40 rides and attractions, and in the statement, M&D said it's been a challenging few years and we've worked really hard to try and diversify and keep the business afloat. Like many leisure businesses, the plans we have for the 2020 season have had to be cancelled due to COVID-19. We explored all options to try and safeguard the business and jobs of our colleagues, many of whom are long-standing. However, it's with a heavy heart that we had to make 165 employees redundant. Now, the news article continued, said, M&D has advised employees to contact the government's redundancy payment service. The move just before payday angered staff who posted on social media that they were expected to receive furlough payments. And last year, don't forget, the owners were fined 65 grand for health and safety breaches after the tsunami coast derailed in June 2016, where seven children among the nine people injured when five gondolas plunged 30 feet to the ground. Now, M&D's officially posted on their Facebook page, we can confirm that Michelle Elliott and Stuart Robb of Leonard Curtis have today been appointed administrators of M&D Leisure Limited. It's been a challenging few years and we've worked really hard to try to diversify and keep the business afloat. Like many leisure businesses, the plans we have for the 2020 season have had to be cancelled due to COVID-19. We've explored all options to try and safeguard the business and jobs of our colleagues, many of whom are long-standing. However, it's with a heavy heart that we have to make the 165 employees redundant. So that is the official statement and the news article. Of course, the statement pretty much resembles what the news article said. Now let's talk about my thoughts on this. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, m and was a part that I've wanted to visit for a, for, a, for a little while. They had some decent looking attractions. After the unfortunate tsunami accident in 2016, it looks like in the last couple of years, things were really on the up and they were going to get better. We had, I talked about those expansion plans that they had with a brand new roller coaster, other major changes, other new additions. It was a massive expansion plan they were planning. And of course that never came to be now. So it was a real shame to, to sort of hear this news first. Now of course people commented on the video we did yesterday reacting to a Funny Pleasure Boots video and said this news. And I saw TPW's video on this theme park worldwide. And I was really surprised at this news. Obviously I expected at least one or two parks to face the consequences of COVID-19 financially. But I really didn't expect it to be um, a full administration. I thought it was just, well, we're going to keep the park temporarily closed. Um, we may get some financial backers in once the virus is over to help us. And that leads me on to my next point, really. Because administration doesn't really just mean permanent closure. Even though they have made the 165 employees redundant, 
before their furloughed payments, which is a shame. But it doesn't mean the park's going to permanently close. It looks very likely, but I think... And, and you've got to look at Fantasy Island, for example, a few years ago. Now, back in around 2014, Fantasy Island went into administration and they were bought by the Mellors Group. So, Fantasy Island was saved, and it's on the rise and rise. Don't forget that. Fantasy Island are rising ever since. So, if someone, like the Mellors Group, or a different company, or some kind of independent family, wants to buy the park, please put an offer in. Because I would like to see M&Ds get bought. I don't want to see that park taken down. Scotland already lost a big theme park a few years ago. You remember back at the start of the last decade, start of the 2010s decade, we lost Loudoun Castle theme park and all the, well not all of them, but some of the rides from there were moved into Lightwater Valley for their brand new Skeleton Cove Pirate Area in 2011. Um, other rides and attractions were sold somewhere else and either demolished or they were moved to other parts of the world as well. Uh, and other UK parks and I think a couple of rides are travelling so... You know, they sold off those rides, and of course, we, I reported on those housing plans that got scrapped, so that site currently doesn't have a future. Neither does Camelot, neither does Pleasure Island in Cleethorpes. There's a lot of park sites that want to be re reutilised, and I think that a young, up and coming, financial backed UK group can buy those sites once this virus is over. I believe that MDs should get saved. MDs, Camelot, Pleasure Island, Loudoun Castle, all these sites could get bought by an independent UK attraction group. And I think that building this empire once the virus is over, getting together and supporting your local parks, and this group coming in to buy these sites and to get these parks back up and running again, I think that's the best way forward. Or a family could buy this park. Now, don't forget, now I'm going to do a separate news update on this um, either today or tomorrow, but. Indiana Beach. Now, Indiana Beach, of course, we knew the Apex Group put that and Fantasy Island in America up for sale. Fantasy Island in America looks like that's on the way out, but Indiana Beach has been saved, and I'll talk about that more in that news update. But something like that, a family story where even if you're not a theme park enthusiast and you want to, you've had such good memories of that park and you want to buy the park and make it run good, you know, like this new owner at, at the um, uh, Indiana Beach is going to do. I think that someone with a passion for M&Ds, whether you're a coastal enthusiast or not, a passion for M&Ds should come in and buy that passion, run that passion, get the park back up and running again. And I guess it would be a similar story to the new owner at Indiana Beach. There may not be investment for a good couple of years, few years, to get the park back up and running again, just to get the profits back up and running again. But I think in the future, if someone did buy M&Ds, I think they could in the next few years afterwards, after the parts reopened, just bring in loads of investment into this part because there's such good potential and I'd hate to see it go to waste because m and looks, looks like a great leisure park, leisure amusement park and I think that it's got a great potential but unfortunately it's just, it's just suffered the effects of the financial crisis at the minute during the COVID-19 lockdown and the outbreak and the pandemic. And, you know, to be fair, it did sound the phone, on the article in the post, it has had financial difficulties for years. So, you know, this is, this is going way back to the 2016 incident and trying to rebuild. And they tried their absolute best to rebuild and they had a good couple of years after that accident. But it's just been so hard to maintain. And unfortunately, they have come to this very difficult decision. So, like I said before, my heart and prayers goes out to all the staff members and the owners of the park for... Uh, going to this decision and the staff for being made redundant. I hope you all find jobs very very soon I know it's hard these days, but you will find work I promise you and you know what if someone comes in and buys the M&D site and rebuilds the park Employ them back employ those long-standing members back and employ those year-long members back it doesn't, matter, doesn't matter how long you've worked at the park all 165 of them should be employed back if they buy the park and rebuild it so I'd hate to see another part being removed, especially a Scottish one. Remember the stuff about Loudoun Castle. Scotland are losing another massive theme park in their region. 
So Scotland really doesn't have a major theme park. They've got the little parks here and there with one or two coasters. That's good if they can keep them running after this virus is over. But Loudoun Castle, now M&Ds, it's looking very, very unlikely that we're going to see a major theme park in Scotland for a good while now. Unless someone comes in and buys both Loudoun Castle's site and M&Ds and transform both parks. So I'd like to see that. That's my dream personally, to see M&Ds get bought by someone and then rebuilding the park. Same with the other parks in the UK, the sites like Camelot, Pleasure Island. Um, Loudoun Castle over there in Scotland again. I'd like to see someone buy these park sites, these former park sites, and rebuild them again. Build a new empire in the UK theme park industry and run them right. Because they, if they could buy those sites and they could rebuild these parks in their own way, I think they could really compete with the best of the best, family owned parks, Millen Entertainments. I think they can really compete there, but it's just a case of who'd be willing to buy the parks. So I think it's a very sad situation. I would like to see the park being bought, but with the staff being redundant, like I said, it's very unlikely at this stage that no one will buy the park, especially in the current climate as well. So um, if the park do confirm, uh, after their administration that they are going to permanently close the park and rides will be sold off and the, the site's going to get scrapped then I will do a history video uh, like a history documentary type video on M&Ds. I may not have been to the park but I can surely deliver you guys the information, the history and I can give it the respect it deserves. So it's very sad that we are on the, ver on the verge of losing another British theme park. It is in Scotland but it's still part of Great Britain. A British theme park. So it's very sad that we could be losing another one. But hopefully someone like Fantasy Island comes in, buys the park, gets it back up and running again, and we don't have to lose another park. So, thank you very much guys for watching this theme park news from update. Like I mentioned, there's another one coming about Indiana Beach that I'm going to do in the next day or two, so make sure you stay tuned for that. There's updates coming from the likes of Vina Plata and Energylandia, so stay tuned for that. And for now guys, my name is Coaster Chow, keep living the coast life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care guys, have an awesome day.